everyone for coming and being a part of the artist talks for the new round of exhibitions today. We're delighted that you're all here together with us. And even more so, delighted to introduce you to Mo Penders, the artist featured in this exhibition space uh, titled Queer. Mo's going to uh -huh. talk for about 20 minutes, <laughs> and then there'll be time for Q&A. So please be ready with your questions. We're super excited. Thanks, Mo. Thank you. <laughs> so. <laughs> uh, this body of work is called Queer. So queer is uh, kind of like the translation or yeah, translation of the phonetic sound of queer. So it's an appropriation of the word in Spanish. And so this um, kind of poem slash table or graph uh, is playing with the phonetics of how it gets to that and playing with different translations as well. So first it goes like phonetically and it gets to cuero, or, but cuero. Um, which means leather. And this came from um, my partner and I were looking up queer and in French it also means leather. But when I looked, when they said <laughs> uh, leather, I was like, oh, like from the leather gaze, this is where it comes <laughs> from. I never knew. And then I was like, oh, wait, never mind. It's just also leather. Um, and then I, I've also been learning Nahuatl in El Salvador, which is the language that was spoken in most of the country. Uh, but um, due to like oligarchy and colonization and war, a lot of that has been erased. And so it's also like including those words. And then Tesutakwa Tsiwayulu means non binary, so not man, not woman. And all the words pertaining to like transness in Nahuatl always say Yulu, which means heart. So it's always like uh, man in the heart or woman in the heart. Um, and so it's also like talking about my migration right like coming from uh, Cuscatan which is El Salvador now and then moving to Houston or Karankawa and then now in Cumeya which is San Diego so it's just like how language also changes when we ourselves move so it's yeah this body of work talks a lot about like or is based on that right like um, war and transness and translation and constantly having to translate who you are and how people perceive you, right? Um, and the photographs were all taken in the last two years. So that's Mariposa, to right, like the, right when the pandemic started, it was, this photo was taken March 29th, actually. <laughs> I remember, <laughs> 2020. Uh, and then these two were taken in El Salvador, so both Cuscatan and Cuero. Um, and this one was photographed in the area where my grandmother was born. And it was also the first time that like a partner had ever gone to El Salvador with me or traveled with me. And then it's funny because when you go, like I assume everyone knows about my queerness, but no one, like we don't talk about it. And then it's just like, oh yes, it's my friend, but, <laughs> or we're friends, but it's also like this idea of like going together and being there um, in the place where my grandmother was born. Um, and also this desire of always wanting to be home and wanting to go back home and live there, but not necessarily feeling completely safe in living in El Salvador. But it's always like this longing to go and live there. And then the, that image in the back that's called Topical, uh, <laughs> it's a little bit of a joke because I, I like people that are usually are on HRT or artists that use hormones usually make a lot of art around like uh, the injections, right? But I use topical tea. <laughs> and so I always have to stand there with a fan and let it dry because it like sticks to my clothes. Um, <laughs> so it's more about like, yeah, a self portrait And then you can find all the little like details on my dresser. Um, but yeah, I'm like, yeah, it's a lot faster than 20 minutes. <laughs> Tell me, ask me questions. Oh, the hammock? I mean, <laughs> uh, well, I do want to, I think that when I was making this work, um, well, I just moved to San Diego and I'm in grad school. Um, so I want to actually include more of that in my work and I want to actually learn how to make hammocks. And my grandfather on my mom's side was actually, like his family did weaving and stuff like that. So 
it was something that was never like after him it wasn't passed down and I think a lot of things too that weren't passed down to my mom also come I think from the time period of uh because there were a lot of massacres and stuff in El Salvador and it was like complete erasure of indigeneity um and so I think that there was like a lot of assimilation that probably like now I realize I was like oh this is why probably like a lot of like my family doesn't know how to do these things because it was kind of like okay no we need to stop doing this stuff so like I want to work more with the hammocks and also like play with the idea of like including this different form of seating in the space and maybe feel filling a space with <laughs> hammocks and like, yes <laughs> I'm like yes I'm like did, did I did I tell you something else I can't remember <laughs> questions ask me questions I answer questions <laughs> I'm like, which part? I'm like, which part? <laughs> um, what else can I tell you? Mm, I don't know. And oh, well, actually, also the painting, the actually painting it on the wall is part of the work uh, and playing with that idea of like signage. And I know that it's in a lot of cultures, but in Latin American culture, there's a lot of like, painting on walls for signage um, and in my previous body of work I did that as well with my dad's like he was a mechanic and he had a he passed away when I was four right around the war and so I took like his business card and like made the sign of that time period and also like playing with the fonts and the templates um, so it's something that I want to practice more is like this idea of like hand painted signs and signage and yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, ask me questions. Ask <laughs> me questions. <laughs> um, actually, I was wondering if you could just talk a little bit more about the project and your exploring of your relationship to the other project. Yeah, so I mean, this went cuero because leather, it's called, it's okay. leather, right? Like the cow, but I mean, it, yeah, and it's just like where my grandmother was born and grew up around, like, cows and in the country and everything um and it was all I always wanted to I always wanted to have a cow when I was little <laughs> and my mom would always be gifted cows she says she was like oh yeah my grandma would give me cows and I would ask her to sell it or something and I was like why would you sell that I want a cow um but yeah it's in the same sense like it's in the the play of the words right and the sounds and the connection but also the that place and have like going there and the yeah more so like the connection of my family and actually a lot of my family doesn't live in that area anymore everyone left during the war um which is i hadn't thought of till we were there that time like it's very few of my family well actually no one lives here anymore like in that house just like my cousin has cows and pigs there um but like realizing like everyone migrated also to the city like during the war so it's just like it's like constant migration yeah 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 i mean someone else was mentioning that that knows me they're like oh it seems like all these places are like safe places for you and i was like oh interesting <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Well, yeah. Also, Or baby cows. Yeah. <laughs> also, these are milk cows. They don't get killed. <laughs> they don't get to the slaughterhouse. Yeah. Mo, can I ask a question? Yes, of course. Are you making work when you're in all three places, or do you sort of travel and acquire experiences and then go back to like a place and make work? How does it? Mm, I mean, usually, as I don't know. I think it's more subconscious. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I go and I'm always taking photos. Um, and I have an idea of what I'm talking about. And it's more like finding the connections along the way. Um, and trying to, like, this whole time with this, I knew I wanted to have these photos in this space. But I was having a hard time trying to connect the, like, 
make it legit my ideas legible and it's kind of like okay then i start playing for instance with the words and making the connections so it's more so like that. <laughs> yeah does anybody else have any questions A little off topic of this particular art, but I'm just curious about your grandfather and your that kind of worked together and really fiddle and stuff. I mean, you do. No, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, this is all new. Um, I've been doing this well, the more so the writing mm -hmm. uh, and the triangle, and so I think this is also a, the beginning of this body of work, um, and I feel like this is more of a template. And trying to play more, also, I mean, obviously, like, I'm white, right? Like, my family's not, everyone is from El Salvador. So, um, I guess the other side of my family are Irish and stuff. So, trying to think of also, like, their migration and maybe play with those, like, different forms of migration uh, and shapes as well. And different, like, the language playing in, in a different way, so... That's what I was doing now, and also trying to maybe learn how to do like weaving of hammocks and um, also like include different language on them because usually they say El Salvador or play with um, the light because usually they cast a, cast a really nice light or shadow, right? Um, and playing with the language of that weaving as well. And because I was like, if we can't hang it, then I want to put it there on the window. Or something, right? Um, but yeah, this is kind of the, or yeah, playing with the um, the photographs in a different way. Because for a long time, I was doing, I feel like more documentary. Like I didn't want to be like it's documentary, but it seemed very documentary photography of El Salvador, and talking about all the things that happened there, like architecturally, that we're just like used to, like the bars and the wires and the and stuff like that, and so. Recently, I was thinking like, oh, maybe I can create those things outside of the image uh, instead of like just photographing it. And so even like that image, I want to kind of make bars <laughs> over them um, and thinking of how that's something that I've always thought of. However, there like there's all these beautiful landscapes and areas, but at the same time, there's like this constant need for protection or fear and the irony of also like being like caged in um and that like when i moved here i was always like why is my window like facing the street like anyone can walk up to my window and just like <laughs> do anything and over there is like it was like a wall and the barbed wire and then like we had to lock all the doors and the bars and um but yeah so just like questioning all the different how life is different in different places and how that changes our perception and everything so and all the things that are going on in El Salvador right now that seem like a massive cycle that's all happening again. So, yeah. That's the story. <laughs> Thanks, Mo. Thank you. So we're going to transition outside to hear from Gregory, Michael Carter, and Ashley Pridmore. But before we walk through the space, I just want to ask you to sort of have your eyes out for the work of Hedwija Jacobs. Her exhibition is called The Inside of Envelopes. You'll see the envelopes. And then on the opposite side or facing wall, there's an animation. And so after the talk today, if you have a second, go and check those out. Jenny and I can answer any questions you have about that work. Uh, Hedwija is based in Jakarta, so she couldn't be with us today, uh, but she's here in spirit. So let's head outside to the sculpture garden. <laughs> 